Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Spectrum Analyzers, ACLR. In this short presentation, we'll explain the basic technical principles behind ACLR, or adjacent channel leakage ratio, and how ACLR is measured using a spectrum analyzer. This presentation assumes a basic understanding of spectrum analyzer operation, as well as a basic understanding of channel power. We'll briefly review channel power on the next slide, but please see the presentations Understanding Basic Spectrum Analyzer Operation and or Understanding Channel Power if you'd like a short overview of either of these topics. Most modern wireless communications technologies, as well as most broadcast systems, produce signals that are assigned to specific frequency ranges, commonly referred to as channels. These channels are often adjacent in frequency to other channels of the same service or to other spectrum users. In the ideal case, a transmitted signal's power would remain entirely within the assigned channel or frequency limits. We can define channel power as the sum of all power present within a given channel. This is typically determined by integrating the signal power over the channel bandwidth, with the result being an absolute power measured in units of dBm. It is, however, not uncommon for some signal power to extend or leak beyond the edges of its assigned channel or bandwidth. This leakage is most often caused by intermodulation distortion, which can occur when active devices, such as amplifiers, are compressed due to high input power. There are also other causes of leakage, including excessive phase noise, imperfections in the transmitter or system, etc. Leakage is always undesirable because it can create interference for users of adjacent spectrum or channels. Therefore, it's important to be able to quantify or measure this leakage. Adjacent channel leakage ratio, or ACLR, is the standard way of quantifying this leakage. ACLR is a very important measurement for devices or systems using wideband, digitally modulated signals. You may also hear this referred to as adjacent channel power ratio, ACPR, or simply adjacent channel power, ACP. In this measurement, spectrum is divided into a transmit channel and one or more adjacent channels. We'll go into detail on this on the next slide. The power in each of these channels is then measured. ACLR is defined as a ratio of two powers. The first is the power in the transmit channel, and the second is the power in each adjacent channel. Here, this shaded box indicates the equivalent channel power after integrating the power over the channel limits. This difference in power is usually given in dBc, that is, the number of decibels down from the transmit or carrier channel. All ACLR measurements require the measuring of power in the transmit channel and in at least one adjacent channel. In most cases, adjacent channels are paired and symmetric around the transmit channel. Adjacent channels can be designated as upper and lower for clarity. Note that channels don't normally directly touch. There are small gaps between them. Many ACLR measurement standards also specify an additional set of channels above and below the directly adjacent channels, and these are often called alternate channels to distinguish them from the channels which are truly adjacent to the transmit channel. Channel bandwidth and spacing are defined relative to the center of each channel. In many cases, the bandwidths of the transmit channel and the bandwidths of the adjacent and alternate channels are identical. The small gap between the channels occurs because the channel spacing is wider than the channel bandwidths. Note, however, that when configuring ACLR measurements, the distance or spacing of the channels is usually specified relative to the center of the transmit channel. But keep in mind that most ACLR measurements are made by selecting a predefined standard rather than by manually configuring these parameters. ACLR is measured using a spectrum or signal analyzer. 
Recall that ACLR measurements involve summing up or integrating the total power in each channel, and thus ACLR measurements are normally performed using a special automatic measurement function. Results are typically displayed both graphically and numerically, and we'll look at an example of this shortly. When choosing a spectrum analyzer for measuring ACLR, high dynamic range is the most important parameter. Since ACLR measurements require the accurate measurement of both very high and very low power levels. With regard to configuring ACLR measurements, recall that some wireless communication standards specify measurement parameters, that is the signal and channel configuration, measurement settings, limits, etc. Some analyzers allow settings to be configured by loading a standard or setup file and or they can automatically configure optimal settings based on the user-defined channel configuration. If manual configuration is required, there are some standard guidelines regarding measurement parameters. Span should be set wide enough to cover all channels, plus an additional recommended margin of 10%. As with most other measurements, resolution bandwidth involves a trade-off between speed and accuracy. For ACLR measurements, resolution bandwidth should be set to 1 to 4% of the channel bandwidth. Video bandwidth should be set to at least three times the resolution bandwidth. And since ACLR is a power measurement, the RMS detector should also be used. Increasing sweep time tends to improve measurement reproducibility, although this will of course also increase measurement time. And finally, if the analyzer supports noise cancellation, this should be enabled as well. Here is an example of how ACLR measurement results are typically displayed. A graphical view shows the measured power over the span, with the transmit, adjacent, and alternate channel boundaries displayed. Shaded bars show the measured power for each channel, and it's these powers that are displayed numerically. For each channel, the channel bandwidth is given, along with the offset for adjacent and alternate channels. The power in the transmit channel is always given in absolute units of dBm, since this power will be used when computing the ratio of channel power to leaked power. However, for adjacent and alternate channels, ACLR is normally calculated and displayed in units of dBc or dB down from the transmit carrier. Note too that if any channel limits are violated, these are usually indicated using a different color or sign for ease of identification. Let's end with a brief summary. Modern wireless communications technologies usually assign signals to defined frequency ranges or channels. Particularly in the case of wider bandwidth, digitally modulated signals, some signal power can leak beyond the channel limits, and this can potentially cause interference to other users of nearby spectrum. The amount of leakage can be quantified using ACLR, or the adjacent channel leakage ratio. You may also hear this called adjacent channel power ratio or adjacent channel power. ACLR is calculated by integrating the power over each adjacent channel, and comparing it to the power in the transmit channel. A spectrum or signal analyzer can be used to measure ACLR. The first step is defining the channel widths and spacing, although in many cases this is done by loading the relevant standard on the analyzer. Measurement parameters such as span, resolution and video bandwidth, sweep time, etc. can also be adjusted for optimum speed or accuracy. And finally, ACLR measurement results are typically shown both graphically and numerically. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Spectrum Analyzers, ACLR. If you'd like to learn more about spectrum measurements or spectrum analyzers from Rody and Schwartz, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.